Welcome to today's session of the overview webinar series by Indica Courses. My name is Dimple and I'm the servant leader at Indica Courses. We are a pioneering Indica edtech enterprise in the indigenous knowledge systems domain and we create and curate online courses across multiple IKS disciplines for lifelong learners who share our belief in the transformative power of timeless indigenous wisdom. We offer both self-paced courses and uh, other courses, which are live, or we, we call them cohort courses, and uh, both these modes are offered on our learning portal. To, more, uh, to know more about Indica courses, you could uh, visit our website, which is indica.courses. You could also follow us on our social media to stay updated on our upcoming courses and the ongoing ones too. The overview webinar series has been created as an interface for prospective learners to understand what a particular Indica course would offer so that they can make an informed enrollment decision. We have organized quite a few sessions uh, in the last so many months and you can watch the recordings of all of those overview webinar uh, sessions on Indic Academy's YouTube channel. Uh, the link of the same uh, playlist will be shared in the chat box uh, so that you can peruse it at leisure later. Today's webinar is about the upcoming Indica course and introduction to the Tirupural, which offers an opportunity to know more about Maharshi Tiruvalluvar and gain an understanding of how Hindu civilizational ethos is reflected in his beautiful composition, the Tirupural. The course begins from the 6th of March. Live sessions of an hour each will be conducted on every Monday at 7 p.m. IST. Our faculty, Vinod Kumarji, uh, uh, Shanmugamji, and Vasant Parthasarthi ji of Vishwa Vidya Foundation shall be taking you through the details of the course this evening. But before I invite them to present this overview, let me introduce the both of them to you. Vasant Parthasarthi ji is a software professional based in Chennai. Qualified as an engineer, he has been active in social work for over 22 years. He has been a part of cultural education for children for over 18 years and has been a member of the editorial team of a youth magazine. With a keen interest in education and developmental psychology, Vasanji has helped start multiple social organizations in diverse areas of interest. He is the founder of Vishwa Vidya Foundation, an organization focused on recovering Tamil education and Bhartiya Shiksha. Our other faculty is Vinod Kumar Shanmugamji. Vinodji is a physics teacher, having graduated in physics with multiple post-graduations in education, English, and education management. He cleared his NET and is presently doing research in Indic educational system. He has an experience of 15 years in teaching values and ethics through many NGOs. And he also has his own NGO that has been involved in education for more than 10 years. A yoga trainer and motivational speaker, Vinodji has conducted various workshops in the core subjects and in ethical values and morals across the state. Vinodji is a trustee of Vishwa Vidya Foundation, uh, a foundation that we just talked about, founded by Vasantji. The organization is focused on recovering Tamil education and Bhartiya Shiksha. I now invite Vasant Parthasarthi ji to take us through the initial part of the presentation. Over to you, Vasant ji. Thank you so much, Dimple ji. Let me share my screen. I'll just bring up. The screen. Um, good afternoon. Yes. Good evening, uh, everybody. Um, my name is Vasant. So this is in, uh, intended as a quick overview or an introduction to Thirukural. The, uh, the course that's coming up will have obviously a lot more detail. This is meant to give you a glimpse of um, what the course will contain and aspects of Thirukural which are generally overlooked. Uh, Thirukural, uh, as we know, is part of, let me move to the first slide here. So Thirukural has uh, a place in Tamil literature which is very special. Uh, it is very special for multiple reasons, um, not just because of the content of the subject that it's dealing with, but it's also uh, part of what is called the Sangam uh, literature. Um, as many of you know, Sangam literature uh, in Tamil was a pivotal period that is generally considered, uh, there's actually been three different uh, Sangams or three different uh, periods in Tamil literature which have been extremely important. Uh, we don't have any literature related to the first two uh, because they have been uh, taken over by the sea. There is a southern part of Tamil Nadu 
uh, deep south that has been consumed by the sea. We have a civilizational memory. There are records to indicate what happened, but uh, none of the literature has survived uh, those two Sangam uh, eras. The latest Sangam period, uh, the third Sangam period, is generally considered between uh, 300 uh, BCE and 300 CE. Though a recent excavation uh, near Madurai, Madurai is uh, south central Tamil Nadu, uh, has now indicated that uh, it could actually be up to 800 BCE. So the Sangam period could have started uh, as early as 800 BCE. The third Sangam period could have started in. Uh, now 800 BC. So we're talking about um, roughly 1100 to 1200 year period in which a considerable number of texts were written. Um, the majority of the texts or the primary texts as they are considered uh, are Padinin male Kanaka and Padinin Kir Kanaka, right? So Padinin um, male Kanaka, Padinin means it N is eight, uh, Padi is 10. So Padinin is basically 18. Uh, male Kanaka and Kir Kanaka basically mean the greater 10 and the lower, uh, low, greater 18 and the lower 18. Um, it doesn't mean anything to do with the subjects or the greatness of the content. It's about the size of the text themselves. So when we say Padin and Male Kanaka, these are uh, large poems. We're talking uh, 800 uh, verses or more. Uh, Kir Kanaka are, I think, oh, I'm sorry, Kir Kanaka is around 800 verses. The male Kanaka is uh, several uh, thousand probably. So that is about the uh, classification. These are considered to be the most important uh, texts in uh, the Sangam era. The Padin and male Kanaka consists of, uh, like I said, 18. They are classified further. They are called Patupate or a grouping of 10 uh, uh, poems uh, or works. And then Ittu Togai. So these are uh, classification based on how the verses are constructed, the grammar of how the verses are constructed, uh, just a grouping of the literature that's been done. And the Padin and Kir Kanaka is very interesting. We have um, we have listed them on the side. You can see all of them, though they are listed in um, transliterated English in the Roman script. Um, Padin and Kir Kanaka is where Tirukural appears. Now, what is very interesting about uh, the Padin and Kir Kanaka is it is not just poetry. It is not uh, it is not random text. Usually we have poems which are praising kings and their uh, victories, their uh, conquests, or poems that praise uh, God. The Padin and Kir Kanaka, the eighteen of the Padin and Kir Kanaka, uh, eleven are considered to be Niti Nulgal. Uh, Niti Nulgal again. Uh, largely Sanskrit, uh, they are shastras which advise, which tell us how uh, people have to live their lives or basically these, these are the guardrails uh, which society are expected to, so people in society are expected to follow. And uh, I will get this out of the way. And of these 11, Tirukural is one of them, right? Um, now, why again is Tirukural very important? Because Tirukural uh, has repeatedly been identified as a compilation or a great compilation of all the Shastras that uh, the Vedic heritage system, the Vedic uh, civilization has put forward in the Tamil, uh, you know, Tamil context, in the Tamil uh, society. Tirukural has been able to compile all of them. We will see as we move forward in the later slides. They have compiled extremely important subjects in a very, very brief form. And that is why Tirukural has uh, taken on a very uh, primary role when we talk of summer literature. And uh, because of what Tirukural has uh, done, meaning basically represent the Vedic uh, civilizational ethos or put together a, a very simple way of addressing the Vedic civilizational ethos, Tirukural itself is called the Tamil Vedam. Uh, or it is the Veda in Tamil. That's uh, a common ref a reference that uh, we make to Tirukural. Um, we'll just see a bit about what the structure of the text itself is. So Tirukural, uh, Kural is basically a form where there are uh, two verses, two lines, 
the first verse has four uh, words the second verse has three and that's the way the kural is formed uh, thiru is a prefix that is given um, like shri in um, sanskrit where uh, it is meant to uh, determine something that is very uh, important or holy uh, thiru kural the text has uh, been uh, organized under the three uh, large ashramas that uh, or purusharth sorry uh, of the hindu civilization so uh, aram porul and inbam are the three uh, major classifications and in which the uh, tirukural has been structured aram is a direct translation of the word dharma in uh, sanskrit uh, aram is basically indication on how to uh, live our lives based on dharma the dharmic basis of how our daily life should be conducted is what the uh, aratpal handles are. pal is the topic aratpal is the one that handles the topic of aram or dharma porutpal porul again is artham literally in both the uh, wealth sense as well as the meaning sense so uh, porutpal is the one that handles how we have to uh, live our lives as a grahastha uh, which addresses the next uh, ashrama the grahastha ashrama Uh, and how a king has to live uh, how the king has to rule his kingdom the the uh, the good practices or the politics of it how a good ruler should handle his people how he should tax how he should uh, ensure the welfare of the people all of that is getting addressed in the artha uh, section of the porutpal inbam is the kamatupal um, so this is Uh, a place which talks again more of the grihastha thing uh, this is more of content around how a family life should be handled this is not a social aspect of the grihastha this is the family aspect of grihastha how a husband and wife uh, should be together how uh, a good couple or a good family should live together kama literally means uh, desire inba means pleasure it's basically addressing the same thing now within these three uh, large Uh, headings or uh, groupings there are sub topics which are uh, given in tirukural which are called el so el is uh, uh, so for example under uh, aratpal or are under dharma it says domestic virtue the virtue of how a, a normal man should live or a student should be how an ascetic or a, a sadhu should live and then it talks of for example karma and um, fate and so on so these are sub topics so to speak of uh, dharma and then under porul again we see uh, other aspects the porutpal has how the king should conduct himself how friendship should be conducted how a householder should conduct him or herself all of that yeah and then uh, so all of these uh, make up about 13 yells uh year 13 different sub topics right and the total number of uh, tirukural is uh, 1330 which is divided into what is called an adhikaram each adhikaram has 130 sorry each adhikaram has 10 tirukural and then there are 133 adhikarams which um, are overall uh, spread across these 13 el topics that we just spoke of now there is a common question that comes up Uh, as to why uh, there was no the the fourth uh, purushartha was not addressed there are many different uh, debates around that some people say that is already being addressed in the aratpal some people say tiruvalluvar has written only what he has personally felt and understood so there are different interpretations different uh, perspectives that are provided but what we know for sure is this is not something of a, uh, a text that was lost there are a lot of texts in tamil which have been lost which we don't have a complete uh, collection of this is not one of those this we know for sure that had only 133 uh, adhikarams and then all of them have been recovered and compiled in the proper sense so that is about the structure of tirukural now why is tirukural important we touched upon it initially but uh, like i mentioned there has been um, about the 300 400 year um, uh, let me say practice to give tamil a different 
uh, coloration, right? So that somehow um, disconnects Tamil from the larger Indian landmass. So uh, we are trying to uh, recover. It, it's not lost, to be honest. It's just not popularly discussed. It's quite uh, rigorous. The, the depth of the shastra, the depth of the text is quite uh, deep and it's not that bad, but we're trying to bring it back to public consciousness that Tirukkural is a, an out-and-out -out, uh, Vedic text that has been uh, given in the entire sense of the Vedic ethos. Uh, it is meant to promote uh, the Vedas. In fact, as uh, Vinodji will cover in the future uh, slides, um, it has been considered a work of Brahma himself. Uh, so when Brahma gave the Vedas, so he's going to explain that in more detail. Um, just to highlight that point a bit more, what we have is one quotation from um, Sri Sri Chandrasekhar Saraswati Swamiji, who is the Kanchi uh, Tamakoti Pita uh, former Pita uh, And he says, the shining glory of the Dharma Shastras, the Itihasas and Puranas in the uh, divine verses of Tiruvallur are available. They explain, for example, just to give you a hint of what kind of content is covered in Tirukkural, it covers Deva Yajna, Pitru Yajna, Svarga, Naraka, cycles of birth and death, uh, Swadharma, the four ashramas of life, the Vedic Yajna, uh, Go Samrakshana, how a family should, husband and wife should live together. It talks about Bhakti, it talks about Moksha, it talks about realization, it practically talks about every single aspect of. Um, a Vedic civilization that we can think of. And all of them are presented in a very, very simple form, easy to consume and very uh, potent in their uh, in their depth of meaning. So that is the context of Tirukkural. That is where uh, the Tirukkural originates from. That's the positioning of uh, that text within the larger Tamil literary uh, space. I'll now invite uh, Vinodji to take us through a bit about uh, understanding who Tiruvalluvar himself was. Vinodji? Hari Om Namaste. I feel happy to be here with you all as a part of Indica course and uh, Indica webinar. Uh, we just want to uh, thank Indica also for this uh, wonderful initiation to bring out the text of uh, uh, Tamil people. I should not say Tamil people. The text of Bharatiya people to all language speaking people. So our, my artful thankness to Indika. And then we just move to who was Thiruvalluvar. Before that, uh, by profession, I'm a teacher. So I used to ask questions. As you know, questioning is a uh, very integrated and important part of uh, uh, teaching. So I think you can raise hands, I think. So may I know how many Tamil people are listening now? Uh, if you can, you can just raise hands. Oh, 12. 13, 14, 15. Very happy, happy, very happy to know. So around 14 out of 48 are Tamil people. Why this question arises uh, to me is, um, we, we are just talking with uh, uh, Timber Ma'am that this text should reach the all over the uh, Bharat. Uh, this text is not meant only for Tamil people. Tamil people may or may not have the interaction of Thiruvallava and Thirukural. Other people should also know Thiruvalluvar and Thirupal, as we know, many uh, as the Tamil people learn many Dharma Shastras. So we consider this Thirukula as a Dharma Shastra. So it is a part, it is a part of the life of every Bharatiya to know the Dharma Shastra of all languages. So very, very happy and pleasure to see many people from non-Tamil speaking people joining the webinar. And we'll be very happy that if you join the course, we'll be able to introduce Thiruvalluvar and Thirukula to you uh, as much we can. As we are in the, uh, we are very, uh, so we should say, you know, it's a big ocean. We are trying to just, uh, uh, just get inside the ocean, touch its water, and uh, drink as much as we can. Because Thirukul is very big ocean, and I just want to introduce Thiruvalluvar now. Next slide. So I just want to uh, show you Thiruvalluvar. That's all. And there are many stories in Tamil Nadu about Thiruvalluvar, his life history, his uh, birth date, and birth day, and birth year. Many stories goes on because he is nearly two thousand years old man. Actually, the, we always say that we can never become old because his thoughts are always new and uh, energetic. 
though his thoughts are anything a new is nearly 2000 years old as per the assumption made in tamil nadu and i should say it is assumption actually because it is not yet proved because at which century or which year he was born uh, we assume it, he was born bc 31 common era 31 is the birth year of thiruvalluvar and it is a 100% assumption because we don't have enough proof that uh, he, he should have born in that year that one thing and many tamil scholars are claiming that he should have born after 4th century also that is around 4 5 and 6 century because as vasathanna is talking about sangam literature thiruvalluvar comes in the thirukkula comes in the later sangam literature the last part of sangam literature the last part of sangam literature is around 3rd 4th century so he should have born around 5th or 6th century is also the assumption of uh, many tamil scholars so we could not prove the exact era of uh, thiruvalluvar we just fix it as uh, common era before common era it is 31 we assume the age of uh, thiruvalluvar and it is one of the speciality of thiruvalluvar no? we are talking about a person who was born 2000 years before today in a webinar uh, which was listened by many people all over the world it's one of the speciality of thirukkula and thiruvalluvar and no in normally when we go for any text in uh, sanskrit there will be some introduction of a uh, author or the the poet who has written the text like hanuman uh, it may be any text no with the uh, the author who has written the text will be introduced as a past part as a guru vanakam or guru vantan uh, in tirukkural it is not like that so we don't get much information of uh, thiruvalluvar he was assumed to be lived at mailapur in chennai because there is a temple in mailapur which is nearly 600 years old the temple is assumed to be 600 years old we have a temple for him for thiruvalluvar so he it is assumed that he will lived there in uh, mailapur that's one thing which we there is uh, proved that he should have lived in chennai in mailapur and he is one of the poet of sangam literature though thirukkural was considered to be the uh, last part of sangam literature he is also uh, taken as one of the sangha sangha, uh, sangha poet actually there are two opinions uh, many tamil scholars does not uh, take him with the uh, sangam literature and many says he is also belong to the uh, sangam poet actually and but there was many evidence that he lived along with avvayar uh, very famous tamil poet of uh, tamil poet actually uh, very sanatana dharma dharmi he should, he should be called as a sanatana dharmi and her poems are uh, very much related to lord ganesha she should have lived along with thiruval along with thiruval this is the same period of thiruval again everything goes as an assumption and and we are uh, searching and researching more and more to get the exact life history of uh, world war and there was a lot of controversies and lot of different opinions in the uh, age of world war the place where he have gone and one now uh, one the thing which is very confirmed is his wife name was vasugi because there was many reference to it and she is it seems to be one of the auspicious women living with him served him for his uh, whole life actually so we should uh, read about her also we may cover some uh, text about uh, vasugi also because how was dharma shastra was taught to the uh, women is uh, very very important as she lived by the uh, rituals and uh, as by these dharma shastras that's one thing which i want to just mention here so uh, to speak more about uh, thiruvalluvar and his uh, importance no uh, i just want to quote a small uh, three lines uh, sayings in tamil it says no manidan iravanukku koduthathu tiruvaachakam iravan manidanukku koduthathu geethai manidan manidanukku koduthathu tirukula which means the text given by the man to the god is tiruvaachakam there is a text called tiruvaachakam which is a bhakti literature in saivism actually in tamil nadu in saivism it is given by the man to lord shiva and the god given the text to human how to live we call it as bhagavad gita which we are very familiar with and the human the man the text given by the man to the man we call it as tirukkural it is a saying in tamil nadu in tamil which emphasizes the the importance of tirukkural so which compares tirukkural with tiruvaachakam which compares tirukkural with bhagavad gita so it is it is in tamil nadu we compare tirukkural with vedas also we call it as a, a name of tirukkural as tamil veda where you can learn our dharma shastras there was many names for thiruvalluvar actually so he was called by different names he was called deiva pulavar deiva means actually god god poet poyil puravar nayanar 
at someone uh, some time as he is a nayan mars so he is also one of the nayamas he, he was not included in 63 nayamas uh, he was claimed to be a saivet and he they say he is also it could be also called as a nayan mars i have shown you some different photos which which is widely used in tamil nadu for uh, thiruvallur we could not get the exact photo of thiruvallur as uh, we know there 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 be no scope for taking photograph in those days actually and the first photo is 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 the oldest photo in the uh, printed book of thiruvallur where the thiruvallur is climbed as a saivet and government approved around 1960s no there was a painting by a uh, venu sharma venu gopal sharma so it, the government approved that photo which we are seeing as a second photo and there was many different uh, picture of valluvar which are, which was shown in the picture uh, with uh, the uh, with the um, tilak in the head which was painted actually so there are different phases of thiruvalluvar and the photos are the history of uh, thiruvalluvar for us does not uh, uh, mean much when we start learning and following thirukural because thirukural and the meaning of thirukural has a lot of uh, information to teach us so life of thiruvallur we should know a glance and we be talking about the life of thiruval also in the uh, courses uh, some e- e- evidences by uh, the tamil words you no know, we call it as uh, epigraphy of tamil you no know, uh, quoting the words of different literature in the same period we we will just discuss about uh, the period of thiruvallur the image of thiruvallur and the importance of thiruvallur in the in our sessions also actually i uh, just want to introduce you thiruvallur he is a, a great poet the quiet in tamil literature especially in the later sangam literature he has uh, we we see in our courses no he has given the all dharma shastras in very simple text in uh, thirukural actually so uh, next slide and i just want to just quote one only one poetry which talks about uh, thiruvalluvar uh, it is called thiruvalluva malai malai in tamil means garland actually so thiruvalluvar malai refers to garland for thiruvalluvar there are nearly 55 poems written about thirukural and thiruvalluvar so it is a very speciality of uh, this particular uh, text called thirukural no other text in any language may, may, uh, as much we know or no other text of tamil even has this type of text we talks which prize about the text actually. there may be one or two poems which prize about the other text of tamil for example we have uh, we are talking about tiruvasagam there is many poems which prizes tiruvasagam we can when we can count that now we can count it can go for a 5 to 10 poems which talks about the tiruvasagam and here the tirukkural has nearly 55 poems which talks about tiruvalluvar and tirukkural which prizes tiruvalluvar and tirukkural and it was all compiled actually it is all compiled and it is the the uh, period of texts around 11th century and many of the some of the texts may be uh, after the 11th century also but it, but normally the average uh, average period of this text is around 11th century and it was compiled and the name was given as thiruvalluvar malai which is called garland for thiruvalluvar so the prizing the thirukkural and thiruvalluvar i just want to read only one text uh, one uh, say you uh, we got to say you in tamil we one poem from that uh, text so to understand the importance of uh, thirukkural and also the uh, thiruvalluvar we be learning this thiruvalluvar malai also some of the text of thiruvalluvar also in our course so join the course for knowing more about thiruvalluvar malai and the text of thiruvalluvar malai and it says here uh, it is uh, there is tamil transliteration uh, english transliteration also we can you can read non my non marayin mei porulai mupporula nan mugathon tan maraindu valluvanai tanduraitha nool muraiyai vandikka sennivai vaalthuga nannenjam sindikka ketka sevi it is very very simple poem you know uh, actually you know we could all understand tamil and sanskritam because both will be in our uh, dna and blood because uh, when we when we tamil people feel no if tamil is our mother language sanskrit should be our father language so it is our asian spiritual languages so both are uh, asian spiritual languages which we, we should all know nan marayin mei porulai mupporula nan mugathon nan marai we call it as nan marai marai means veda you know the 
four vedas the message of the four vedas the valluvar has made the message of the four vedas in mukpurulai in three we call it as uh, three divisions of trikona uh, no vasantana has talked up just before we call it as aram porul uh, inbam three topics so what he is saying the poet in tiruvalluvar malai saying what he is he is praising no uh, this valluvar this poet has taken the message of four vedas and made into three parts nan marayin mei porulai muk porulai so he has made in three parts muk moonru it is called in tamil no three muk porulai he has made in three divisions so what he has made in three divisions nan marayin mei porulai so the four vedas nan marayin four vedas mei porulai we can take it as a message message of four vedas is divided into three sections who has done it nan mugathon tan marayindu valluvanai the valluvar see the adjective given for valluvar nan mugathon tan marayindu valluvanai there is a story in tamil nadu about thiruvalluvar he is in incarnation of rad brahma so brahma has four heads no nan mugathon nan means four mugathon four faces four heads so the god of four heads is brahma the brahma he himself born as thiruvalluvar nan mugathon tan marayindu valluvanai actually so the brahma came as valluvar because we believe in incarnation no our our dharma believe in incarnation we have a lot of incarnation of vishnu we have a lot of incarnation of shiva and we believe god will born in our land to teach many things correct so bhagavad gita we read as a text given by the uh, uh, god himself no so here the poet praises valluvar as the incarnation of brahma itself nan mugathon tan marayindu valluvana he himself came as valluvar so valluvar is uh, who is valluvar he is the incarnation of rad brahma why is called rad brahma why not vishnu and uh, shankar we will just discuss in the course okay so he is saying now oh, the valluvar is the incarnation of rad brahma tandu uraitha he has given it tandu uraitha he has said uraitha in tamil means said no tandu uraitha he has given who has given valluva has given who is valluvar the incarnation of lord brahma is valluvar what he has given he has given the message of four vedas in three sections inbam uh, aram in uh, aram poru inbam so he has not talked about moksha we should not say he has not talked about moksha moksha are the fourth state valluvar has talked in many places in tirupur actually but the separate divisions are separate it's not uh, that heading is not given that's it because uh, the path of moksha is given so here it is the moksha part is also included in three sections that's the true actually in trikula when we go for inside trikula we be learning more about that so the message of four vedas valluvar is given in three sections who is valluvar he is the incarnation of rad brahma rad brahma himself came down as valluvan and he has given this message of four vedas in tamil in three section tanduraitha nul murai vandika vandika is again a beautiful tamil word in sanskrit vantana vantanam vante mataram so we should worship or salute no nul murai vandika so we should worship that book so not only worship book no when we say worship book we start worshiping we just keep the books inside our uh, uh, puja alamari and we just praise every day we just say, uh, say the names of valluvar uh, one or two times and just praise no he is not stopping there see here noon more vandika chennivai vaartuga why means as a mouth actually so mouth should praise tirukural the tirukura has to be praised the tirukura has to be worshiped nannenjam sindika and i i feel this is very very important word in this uh, small text no nannenjam sindika nenjam means again heart no you should think of it what the valluva said you should start thinking of tirukur i said in the last slide no the life of valluvar is very very important it will be very interesting also so doing research is life of valluvar is also a very very equally important work but uh, behind behind it not only behind it apart from it learning tirukural by heart and knowing the meaning of tirukural at least 10 living by the tirukural at least to one is more important if you ask me whether you should do research on life of valluvar i should say no do research on tirukural at least take one tirukural do a research on one tirukural the meaning of tirukural and try to live in it valluvar himself will say karka kasara karpai katrupi nirka adakkaga 
when you learn something you should also stern by what you are learned you know that's the words of world where we be learning in the courses uh, uh, in the next month okay so fine so what i'm saying is noor murai vandika so we should salute worship senni vai vaathuga we should praise with our mouth we should uh, allowed we should praise it loud nannenjam sindhika not only praising you should think what is given in the text we should think ketka savi savi is your ears we should hear we should hear by our ears we should think by our thoughts by our mind we should think we should praise it by our words we should worship so this is the words given by a poet in tiruvalluvamalai about tirukural and also about tiruvalluvar he say tiruvalluvar is the incarnation of lord brahma lord brahma came to the world he himself gave this tirukural in three sections what is the three sections three sections is nothing but the four message of the message of four vedas the four vedas messages as given as three sections by the lord brahma coming as a valluvar we should start worshiping it we should not we should start praising it we should start thinking about it we should hear it again hearing is also very very important in tamil culture and tamil literature not only tamil culture in our in our bharatiya culture hearing is also very important so that we hear the shlokas in the morning you know when you get up in the morning we just switch on the audio or video we just started hearing shlokas arman chalisa aditya hridayam everything we hear because we we started feeling when you hear when we start uh, worshiping when you hear no so tirukkal is also a text which has to be heard which has to be by hearted which has to be praised which has to be thought in our minds for living a dharmic life so uh, we we very happy to introduce valluvar and tirukkal to the uh, greater audience of uh, uh, bharat and we also request everyone we also expect everyone to join the course so that we will learn together and uh, we have get, we get more interaction of uh, through kural in the future so that the message of trigus should be spreaded and it should spread the whole universe because it is the message of the universe because trigus is called as ulaga podu marai so the trigus is not called as tamil nul because we uh, the tamil people or indian people uh, have a very big heart they won't say it is my book it is the book written for the world it is a book written for the dharmic living so the book is written by the tiruvalluvar in tamil language for the world not only for tamil people correct so for spreading the message of uh, tirukural for spreading the message of tiruvalluvar we are here join us in our mission let us spread the good to every people in the world so that dharmic life sustains the world it is the matter of sustainability so sustainability is possible only by dharma dharma is possible only by reading our sacred text so one of the sacred text is through tirukkural let us start reading discussing the sacred text of uh, tirukkural together in the course over to vasanthana for a uh, sandy thank you vasanthi um and just as we were listening to uh, uh, vinod ji explaining just one verse it is so obvious that this Uh, tradition is very very rooted in the larger indian bharatiya uh, cultural uh, matrix uh, just for example right the very first verse here talks of nan nan marain mai purulai mupurulai nan mugathon san marind so he says brahma has come in as tiruvalluvar and explain which is exactly what we also say of veda vyasa we say vyasaya vishnu roopaya vyasa roopaya vishnave so vyasa took the form of, uh, vishnu took the form of vyasa to give us uh, the vedas and the bharata mahabharata so uh, it is very similar in approach and towards the end you also see how it should be praised it should be contemplated it should be listened to which is exactly what shravanam mananam nididhasnam uh, talks of it so this is a complex um, bharat extremely uh, tied into our larger vedic civilization and uh, culture Uh, so we'll now try to learn some of the verses which will be uh, like you know we said it's going to be an important part of understanding and learning our uh, you know text so what usually happens in the bharatiya system is by in the childhood children are expected to uh, memorize a lot of these verses and then as the children grow and as they understand uh, the language better the grammar and the uh, text better their own psychological evolution will give them the answers 
to the problems they're facing in life. So that's been a tradition uh, across India and probably wherever our civilization has uh, impacted. So we'll try to do some of that in the uh, text here. We'll try to read uh, some verses of Tirukkural. We'll probably do a quick uh, run by them. I have a very brief meaning, which will again explain how it comes from the larger Indian um, and Vedic context, right? So the first uh, verse we have is from uh, Kadavul Vajra or the prayer uh, Adhigaram or the first 10 verses which are uh, meant for prayer. It says, Katradanal Aya Payan Enkol Val Arivan Natral Toraar Enin. The word goes as what is the, it actually is flipped. It's usually in Tamil, for the people who understand Tamil, it starts with Natral Toraar Enin. Katradanal Aya Payan and Kul. So it's a, basically that's the way it should be uh, read. Um, it's, the question is, what is the use of all of your knowledge, all of your education and skills that you have gathered if you don't worship the all-knowing um, Brahman or the Param Purul as in Tamar as they call it. So Val Arivan is what is expanded uh, knowledge, completely expanding uh, omniscient. Uh, to use an English uh, equivalent, right? So what is the use of all the education? Uh, what is the use of all the skills that you have learned if you are not worship the uh, the feet of the all-knowing one? Right? That's, that's how the uh, shloka starts. And we're making this point very particularly because there have been some um, attempts to explain that Thiru Thiruvalluvar was an atheist, um, uh, or even, uh, you know, they belong to the Semitic religions and so on. So uh, just to make a point there. The second one says, Tanakku uvamai illadan tal stendar kallal manakkavalai matral aridu. So Tanakku uh, uvamai, upama is a Sanskrit word which directly translates to uvamai in Tamil. Uh, basically saying uh, anupama is is a Sanskrit word again, one which is who is not matched or matchless. Tanakubamai illadan tal serndar kallal manakavalai matral aridil. Except for those uh, who have surrendered themselves at the feet of uh, the God, the others will not get relief from their uh, manakavalai is um, stressed or distress in their minds, uh, sorrows, as it's translated there. Sorrows, they will not get relief from their sorrows uh, unless they go and surrender at the feet of the Lord. Right? This again is part of the same Kadavul uh, Now This another one. Suvai, Oli, Uru, Osai, Natram, Indri, Aindin, Vagai, Tirivan, Tatte, Ulagu. So these are the five senses that um, are talked about. Suvai is taste, Oli is light, Uru is touch, Parsha, Osa is sound, Natram is uh, gran as a smell. And these are the five senses. And a person who has understood the essence of these senses, or basically someone who has mastered these senses, uh, has mastered the world. And this is a concept that we have repeatedly come across in the larger Indian context. This is not something new. Uh, next verse reads, Urumayul Amaipol Aindadakkal Atrin Yerumayum Ema Pudaitu. Here, Urumay is singularity, literally meaning uh, singularity. The singularity is one of single mindedness as well as the single uh, truth which pervades uh, the universe. <clears throat> One, the person should pull in their five senses, like the uh, tortoise can pull in its feet and then its head. All the five uh, externalities of the tortoise go into its shell. Just like the tortoise does that, we should be able to pull all our senses in and then focus on the single truth that exists across uh, the universe in this birth. And what does that do? Doing that in this birth saves us from the next seven births. Or it basically says you're going to be relieved from the cycle of birth and death. You're going to be saved from uh, karmic uh, problems. 
ஒருமையுள் ஆமை போல் ஐந்தடக்கல் ஆற்றின் எழுமையும் ஏமா புடைத்து ஒன் மோர் அகென் this is again talking of the five senses and these we can immediately relate all of these to for example what we hear in the bhagavad gita and you can understand why it's so uh, commonly referred to and compared with the bhagavad gita these are all concepts that we have repeatedly heard in the bhagavad gita as well puri vayil ainda vittan poi thir olukka neri nindrar needu vaalvar puri is the sense again puri vayil is uh, the uh part of the root in which the senses are taken out the senses flow out of the body that's the general explanation that is given so the senses take us out uh towards the world in terms of sense enjoyment those who have burnt that um samadhana or uh, you know to burn uh sense of pleasure and conquered it avittal is to literally burn it ஐந்த இஸ் ஃபைவ் ஐந்த அவித்தல் ஃபைவ் சென்சஸ் விச் டிரா ஒன் அவுட் இஃப் தேர் பர்ன் தே ஆர் ரிலீவ் ஃப்ரம் ஃபால்ஸ்ஹுட் ஃபால்ஸ்ஹுட் நாட் இன் டர்ம்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஸ்பீக்கிங் ட்ரூத் இன் ஃபால்ஸ்ஹுட் திஸ் இஸ் ஃபால்ஸ்ஹுட் இன் டர்ம்ஸ் ஆஃப் அசத்தியம் தட் தி யூனோ வேதஸ் அண்ட் வேதாங்க டாக் அபவுட் போய் தீர் ஒழுக்க இஃப் ஒன் ஃபாலோஸ் தட் பார்ட் தே வில் லிவ் ஃபார் எவர் தட் இஸ் த a uh, simple explanation what you see on on the right in english is a kind of free form uh, english translation it is not the most um, accurate but the uh, in the sessions in the original training sessions we will probably go into each of these words and understand a uh, context of each word and why they used it in that context um, to give a better picture of uh, the larger idea that's being pushed so neri nindrar need varva these they live forever அழுக்காறு அவா வெகுளி இன்னாச்சொல் நான்கும் இழுக்கா இயன்றது அறம் ஸோ இட் டிஃபைன்ஸ் தர்மா இன் அ நெகட்டிவ் சென்ஸ் இட் வாட் யூ இஃப் யூ டோன்ட் டூ தீஸ் ஃபோர் அண்ட் வாட் ஆர் தோஸ் ஃபோர் அழுக்காறு இஸ் என்வி அவா இஸ் கிரீட் வெகுளி இஸ் ராக் அண்ட் இன்னாச்சொல் இஸ் ஹர்ட்ஃபுல் வேர்ட்ஸ் ஹார்ம்ஃபுல் வேர்ட்ஸ் நான்கும் இழுக்கா ienrad aram so if these are avoided if these are kept out of our uh, character then we will start naturally gravitating towards a dharmic uh, way of uh, life so this is just to give you an example of how tirukural is structured and like i mentioned in the beginning if you can notice there are four words in the top and three words in the bottom this is the typical structure of a kural in fact there are even syllable counts that uh, go into how a tirukural is structured if uh, we will probably have to do that in the larger uh, longer uh, session uh, in the course but we will be uh, covering that as well so how the uh, kural is structured uh, what it means what the words literally mean and then what the words uh, intend to and how they play across in the larger uh, you know tradition and context so that's from our side so i guess we will conclude uh, our direct conversation we will have some uh, q and a of course i see there some questions that have come up as odark uh, elidai unadark aridagi odark elidai is that which is very simple to chant unadark aridagi that which is very deep and potent in its uh, meaning veda porulai miga vilangi that which lives as a uh, the meaning of the vedas seed atror ulludor ulludor ullam urukume valluvar vai moli manbu basically again saying this removes the harm from our life and this is going to melt our hearts that valluvar if we follow valluvar's uh, you know vai moli is word words literally words so we'll close with that and now we'll i guess open up for questions uh dimple ji thank you vasan ji thank you vinod ji yeah thank you vasan ji thank you vinod ji uh, perhaps you could stop sharing the presentation uh, vasan ji yeah. we have a few hands raised uh, from among the audience members and we also have some uh, you know questions and comments uh, 
lastly questions in the q and a box so what we'll do is we'll quickly finish the q and a box questions and then since we still have some time we might invite uh, the four uh, members of the audience who have raised their hands to ask their question one by one so first uh, there is uh, uh, one question by dr dhankar thakur uh, who's a professor of medicine from varanasi he has asked a question which i believe has already been answered but perhaps you could reiterate it so uh, is moksha not there in kurul is uh, dr thakur's question so uh, i think both of us kind of touched upon it uh, in a brief way but let's do that in a uh, more detailed sense right so moksha is understood uh, it is not something that was not known to tiruvalluvar he has repeatedly referred to them in the verses uh, moksha is a concept that he explains uh, often but what he has not done is not given it a separate uh, uh, pal or a separate heading to address why uh, moksha has to be done like i mentioned there are some perspectives that are being uh, positioned but um, for example some people say he has written only what he has uh, seen and lived and so it's a lived uh, truth that he has uh, expressed and uh, once it is moksha in tamil there is a very common uh, saying which says kandavar vindilar vindavar kandilar those who have seen cannot talk about it those who have talked about it are probably ones who have not seen it so that is uh, probably a way uh that it is explained but moksha is not a concept that is outside of the purview of tirukkural he has repeatedly mentioned it uh in fact many of the verses refer to what takes us to moksha but he has not categorized them as a singular uh, topic and then address uh, them in that sense vinod if you want to add anything thank you ha uh, vinod ji would you like to add something yeah, nothing uh, we will we have more discussion in the classes also class <laughs> yes <laughs> so thank you shri ram shesha giri ji asks is tirukural considered as mantras do my lay per man lay woman lay persons understanding is these would be rather shlokas but i would still request the faculty to confirm so is tirukural considered as mantras <laughs> let me uh, i think i can start and vasanth can continue if i miss something uh, tirukural is considered as mantras first thing yes because in tamil wow. uh, tamil culture we have a habit of uh, we call it as mutrodha mutrodha means reading uh, bhakti literature in front of a god uh, occasionally or uh, usually actually every week or uh, something in temples actually in uh, in our shiva temples in the, most of shiva temples mutrosal habit is very very common they will take tiruvachakam or devaram tamil text they just read in front of the god like the same tiruvachakam devaram tirukkura is also read as a mutrosa even today even today the in shiva temples in shaiva uh, in the shaiva traditions trikko is considered as the shaivic text and they read as a mantra actually and one more thing to add we call it as gayatri mantra and we know gayatri is the meter it is actually savitri mantra we call gayatri as a meter trikko is written in the same meter as gayatri mantra so trikko could be considered as the i, I should not say gayatri mantra because gayatri mantra no it became a misconception actually so when we started using the word savitri mantra for gayatri mantra i i be right because gayatri is a meter trikku has written the exact the same meter as gayatri mantra so it gives as the energy as the gayatri mantra of different gods you know so it is the consider as a mantra in tamil nadu we have the habit of chanting trikku in front of the god uh, in many occasions actually it's a habit of uh, it's become a habit even Followed even today in our tradition, in Tamil tradition. Wonderful, wonderful. That's very enriching to know, and you've corrected my ignorance also in real time. So thank you for that. We have a, a question uh, by Arjun Sarajji. Yes, and tell me. So mantra generally is considered to be a revealed uh, verse, right? And yes. therefore, like Vinodji explained, uh, Tirukkural is a revealed verse. Mantra has, I think, multiple facets. It is, uh, it has been revealed. and then it has to address something um, that is uh, you know perennial or forever uh, so in that context it is exactly same as a vedic mantra uh, and like uh, vinod ji said it is chanted uh, on occasions like any other mantra is chanted so in that sense yes wonderful so arun balsar arjun balsar raj ji asks do you have any recommendation for a good english translation of the tirukkural mm. I would say join the course and find out, but no. <laughs> let's just tell him since he has shown curiosity. So, is there any good recommendation? There are many translations and translations in English also actually, uh, but we will suggest that uh, some translation by uh, 
Ubes um, Wu Si Ayer. He's a freedom fighter, very famous freedom fighter. He has trans translated Trickle in English, in the very uh, simply. So we find it we we find that very interesting actually. So there are okay. many uh, interesting Tamil translation also and transliteration also. Um, but what we suggest is we should uh, we should try to learn the text which was Dharmic text in its own language. It has its own taste. For example, learning Bhagavad Gita in uh, uh, Sanskrit, um, Sanskrit is, gives us more pleasure and enjoyment than learning Bhagavad Gita in translated English verse. Same thing, no, it happens to Tamil uh, uh, sacred text also. So I request uh, uh, the uh, the Bharatiya brothers to learn Tamil as we learn other language as it's a part Actually, of a language. Uh, sorry to interject because this thought is inspired by what you are saying. I want to share it with you and the audiences. We have already been running many batches of uh, Sanskrit for Beginners courses and uh, it's too early to share, but we are also uh, looking at uh, rather, uh, you know, offering a learn uh, Tamil for Beginners on our portal. So we hope that because you have said it, that may this uh, energy go to the universe and made this uh, particular venture get come to fruition. So hopefully soon, perhaps a lot of our Bharatiya brothers and sisters would get to learn Tamil on this portal. Who knows? Perhaps. Yeah, That's what. So <laughs> Renu Parekh ji asks, is it correct to assume that the four Vedas have been restructured as three? Yes, it has been already shared during the class. So we will not uh, put but all... Um, uh, again, Renu Pariji asks, uh, all the elements of Bhagavad Gita, that is Karma Mark, Bhakti Mark, and Jnana Mark, are referred and accepted in, but I guess her question is, are these referred to and accepted in the Tirupura? So the answer is... And we, we also have yeah. more discussion in the classes uh, regarding this, because, so uh, we could not explain, or uh, it is not possible to explain Tirupura or the uh, in-depth uh, discussions in our uh, hour, actually. So that should True. be both, both in discussions, and you know? we should be discussing more about this, because we say Tirupura is a Dharmic test. So Dharmic texts have the all the dharmas said in all languages and said in all texts actually. So it should have it should have covered it actually it should have covered because it comes from the same dharma actually. So we will have more discussion in the class. Thank you so much, Avinoji and Renoji. Thank you for your curiosity and questions. We hope to see you in class soon. Uh, then we have. Uh... So uh, there is a question by uh, uh, Mr. Janaki Raman. I think he's just adding to your earlier uh, point about mantra. So uh, yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. uh, it can be taken as a mantra that uh, we can understand. So in case uh, other folks would want to put their question in the Q&A box, please feel free to uh, uh, put it there. Uh, we have Santosh ASG and VS Mahalakshmi ji who have kept their hands raised. So I will invite Santosh ji uh, to talk first and probably they can... Uh, post their question or whatever it is that they wanted to share. Santosh ji, uh, could you please unmute your microphone? Uh, I have invited you to the panel because your hand was raised. So uh, if you're there and are listening to us, could you please unmute your microphone and ask your question? Or, or if it is done inadvertently, in that case, I will, I will, I, since I don't see your response, I'm moving you back to the panel. Uh, I am inviting V.S. Mahalakshmi ji uh, to unmute her microphone and ask her question. Uh, Mahalakshmi ji, are you there? Or is it again, uh, your hand was raised when uh, Vinod ji asked how many uh, Tamil knowing uh, folks are there or how many people from Tamil Nadu are there. So yes, uh, I guess, uh, no, she she might have also, yeah, she might sorry, have- got his hand up again. So I will, yeah, I, uh, let me just, okay, let me, let's have Neela ji first and then we will uh, invite Santo. So Neela ji, you have raised your hand. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, I, I know Tamil, meaning I'm a Tamilian, but um, the Tamil of Tirukural is quite difficult and it's kind of different. So uh, when was it written? And uh, in your class, of course, I think as we learn to understand more of the verses, we will probably understand it as, uh, I mean, as a Tamil speaker. Uh, the only thing is that, uh, yeah, when was it? I mean, uh, maybe I missed the first part. Uh, Tirukural, uh, is it because it was very old and therefore the Tamil is different? Uh, the script is okay, it's the same. But yeah, this was my question as to why it is so different from our spoken Tamil. So basically you're saying that this was in classical Tamil and uh, Vinodji, uh, Vasanji, either of you can take it. 
Okay, I will start and Vasantana can continue. So sure. the Tamil has different, uh, I should not say modification, the development, the letters, script, uh, normally not only Tamil, no? every classical language has many changes mm -hmm. over the years. So, uh, it is, so since it is very, uh, very, very oldest language, uh, Tamil, Samskaram, they, 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 the script, uh, the text will be changing during the uh, centuries actually. So we are saying that the text in the Thirukkar seems to be uh, uh, very not understandable when you read it uh, normally. It is not like that. We have lost understanding the text uh, like Thirukkar or our old Tamil literature. We should start practicing understanding because, for example, uh, the Thirukkar is the one of the simplest uh, Tamil literature from this Sangam literature because when you take Puranaanuru or something like that, no, it will be very difficult actually. So uh, Thirukkar is hmm. one of the easiest uh, texts which you can understand uh, Sangam literatures actually. So hmm. so that the, the the answer is very simple. The every language, every classical language has faced the different uh, changes over the years actually. The script, the letters, the meanings actually because of influence of many other languages and because of influence of many things. Now we are making we are making the language so simple and we are making it communicative. We can say no, no. The Tamil has become a communicative language. If, for example, mm -hmm. when you go for a school zone, so, uh, in English, they have two courses. One is called literature English and they have communicative English. So in communicative English, they make the language so simple so that they understand only to communicate. In literature English, that language is really difficult so that the student will practice the more deep in the languages. Likewise, mm -hmm. in Tamil, the, the, both the parts are, parts are here. Uh, we are in the communicative part. We should rise ourselves to read the uh, text of the Tamil literature. That's what my answer. And, uh -huh. okay. Thank you, Neela ji. Thank you for asking that Thank question. You. Yeah. So, uh, Santosh ji, if you are still around and would like to ask a question, please let us know. Otherwise, we are at 6, 2 p.m. And uh, any concluding words from Vinod ji or Vasant ji? Uh, anything? Before I share a few other pointers that I uh, would like the audience members to know. Anything, Vasant ji, Vinod ji? Um, there was a point about Sangam literature. Um, we yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so uh, we felt, you know, Thirukkural also being Sangam literature, this is actually a good starting point. And like Vinodji mentioned, this is uh, probably the simpler of the texts. So if uh, anyone's interested in Tamil literature, uh, especially the Sangam era, uh, Thirukkural is a great starting point. And uh, this course, I think, will, will be the best uh, introduction for uh, both Tamil and non-Tamil speakers. Wonderful. Anything from you, Vinodji? Uh, uh, my conclusion point is, uh, we have, we have uh, a talk today and our courses should not be a talk. So let me uh, just say, no, we should have chanting also. As we said, Turku is a mantra. There will be chanting session in the course, definitely. For 10 to 15 minutes, we chant. As we chant Bhagavad Gita, as we chant Aditya Hradayam, we should also uh, chant the Turku. We will learn chanting Thirukkural. I know, I know many families you know they chant Thirukkural without knowing the meaning. That's not, uh, that's not bad actually. That's not wrong actually. So mantras has to be chanted first, then understood, so that we go for the next stage. So there will be a chanting session in Thirukkural courses definitely. In if we go for a course for a one hour, ten to fifteen minutes will be devoted to chanting. So I request all the Bharatiya brothers to come for the course and start chanting with us. We chant together. So chanting will definitely spread positivity in our nation. So the dharma and dharmic lives will sustain the world. Nothing more than that. Wonderful. So very well said, Vinodji. Thank you so much, uh, Vasanji and Vinodji, uh, for taking out time today to present the overview. And uh, I thank more than 200 uh, people who registered for this uh, webinar. I, I really look forward to uh, that participation translating into course participation because as our uh, wonderful faculty members have already highlighted, it is a very important course. I hope that this is one of the many such courses uh, from the land of Tamil Nadu that we bring to you. And uh, like uh, Renu Parekh ji gave a suggestion of starting something more on Sangam literature. This is just the initiation. If any of you have any recommendations or any requirements, or you know, you feel that, you know, some few of you would like to understand something or have a course by us uh, in a particular field of Indic knowledge system, please feel free to mail us at reach out at indica.courses. Also, if you have any query about this particular course, uh, which you do not uh, find answers to on the course enrollment page that we have shared with you, feel free to uh, mail us at reach out at indica.courses. We also offer scholarships and grants to those in need. So you can use that uh, route too. Again, the same email ID, and we will make sure that the ones who are deserving do get scholarships and grants as well. We have also sometimes given more than partial scholarships. It's sometimes even free for those who really want to 
uh, join in but are somehow not able to uh, enroll. So that is there. Please spread the word about the course. Uh, we will be sharing the recording of this webinar with you all, of course. Uh, make sure that you uh, share that also with like-minded learners. And I really hope and pray that uh, we are able to create uh, an environment in our uh, wonderful sacred land wherein we understand that the four-faced one, cloaking himself as Vallovan, gave the four Vedas in under three cantos, and that we all know that let that Tirukural be worshipped, praised through mouths contemplated by good minds and heard by our ears. Thank you so very much to everyone. Uh, may we uh, spread the message of Tiruvalluvar which he gave through Tirukural far and wide. And may the glory of uh, these verses reach far, far and wide. And not verses, but mantras. Thank you so much, Vinodji, with Vasanji. Thank you, Koti ji, and other colleagues. And thank you, the wonderful audience. Have a great uh, weekend. Tomorrow, we have another uh, weekend webinar uh, on another upcoming course. So we look forward to seeing you there. And we look forward to seeing you all in the course introduction to Tirukurul, uh, which begins on the 6th of March. Namaskar.